first to feel the effects of the heavy rains. A creek in Winoona burst its banks late yesterday afternoon. Residents moving immediately into damage control mode. Yeah, it's about four inches in the mother wall down south. The full impact of the flood was still to come. As darkness fell, the torrential rain continued. Emergency services rushed into Coromel after a report of a woman trapped inside her car. She made it to safety. Police taking no chances decided to evacuate the entire area house by house as the water continued to rise. Both Bulleye Pass and Mount Oosley were completely cut off. It's just after 8 o'clock and the northbound lane of the freeway has become a raging river. The torrent stopping all traffic. Yeah, I've never seen rain like this ever before in my life. Yeah. I come from New Zealand over here for seven days and when I left someone told me that it doesn't rain in Aussie. I just came back here to see if those guys were okay back there and then um, they said they were stuck and then the next thing we knew we were stuck as well so we couldn't go anywhere either. At 8.15 tragedy struck in Balambi. A 71 year old local man drowned inside his sports car after two metres of water washed across Brompton Road. Attempts to reach the trap man failed. Inquiries are continuing. These stores at the bottom end of Kira Street in North Wollongong swamped with almost one metre of water. At this stage, no one knows how much rain has fallen on Wollongong and the outlying suburbs, but many residents who were spoken to tonight say it's the worst they've seen in many, many years. Locals on foot attempted to negotiate the fast-flowing torrent. Four-wheel drives and emergency service vehicles ferrying people and equipment to various trouble spots. One of those trouble spots, Fig Tree. Yeah, don't go close, we've got the police coming over with the road. Residents and police working shoulder to shoulder to get people to safety. Senior Constable Aaron Peary braving the fast-flying current not once, but three times to reach this family. Once on dry land, he waded back into the murky water to check on another group of residents trapped inside their home. Tow truck drivers armed with ropes ensuring the officer wasn't swept away. The police themselves also required assistance from time to time. Throughout Fig Tree, the force of the water could be seen. Cars picked up and smashed like toys. Residents weren't the only ones affected. A series of landslides and rock falls completely cutting off Lawrence Hargrave Drive at Stanwell Tops. Incredibly, as quickly as the water rose, it subsided. By midnight, the worst of the flooding had eased. The destruction, however, remained. Staff at the Cabbage Tree Hotel faced a mammoth cleanup. In through the doors, in through here, just like a river. A giant freezer thrown against an awning, collapsing it. Inside the hotel, a sea of mud. Stock destroyed, equipment smashed. Inside Coromel's shopping world complex, the water level was still high at 3 a.m. Every store affected. Thousands of dollars worth of stock and shop fittings left floating in the murky water. Chris Rickey, Prime Local News. Illawarra commuters have been left stranded as the flooding caused dozens of landslides along the southbound track. The worst hit was the northern suburbs, where at Culcliffe the track collapsed, leaving a 20 metre gap. Jody Duffy reports. This is the reason why there are no trains today. In 1991, this same site was subject to a landslide, but nowhere near as bad as this. The torrents of water leaving a 20-metre hole under the line, the track left sagging above. Neighbours say they heard the roar as dozens of boulders hurled down the escarpment, many ending up on the road below. But neighbours say the real concern was last night when a southbound train with passengers on board made its way over this track after the subsidence. Now this was at about 7.30, 8 o'clock last night where it was pitch black and I don't know whether they had any idea of the size of the damage that had been done. But I did have fear for the people who were um, in that train that was stuck there and they did take that train south after that huge great hole um, had occurred. A state rail employee said the train proceeded with caution a few metres from the landslide. At Wombara, work is already underway on damage caused by the flash flooding. This is the same site where the Wombara tunnel was to be built. And at Ostermere, neighbours watched on as mud and rock slid from beneath the track, landing dangerously close to their homes. Well, we just had an awful lot of rain in a very short time and things seemed all right when we went to bed and when we got up this morning there was a big mudslide in the backyard. We planted some really nice plants uh, uh, just a few days ago and all gone. <laughs> Every, and the roar of the water is just amazing. Dear me. Had to be seen to be believed.
State Rail says it will be some time before the track is repaired, although limited commuter services are expected to be available during peak hours using the western track. Jody Duffy, Prime Local News. State Premier and Emergency Services Minister have toured one of the worst affected areas to witness the devastation of the floods for themselves. Bob Carr arrived in Wollongong this morning, first for a briefing by police and other emergency services, then it was off to Ferry Meadow with the Emergency Services Minister and Wollongong's Lord Mayor. Residents told the Premier about the horror of the rising waters which caused extensive damage to their homes. Five minutes from ground level up to here, we just got the dogs up. During his tour, the Premier commended all those who helped out during the crisis. There are 30 SES units and 25 of them are from outside Wollongong. And that speaks volumes of praise for how the emergency plan has worked. This is a most extraordinary rainfall. And as I say, uh, it's believed to be the sort of event you would expect once every 300 years. The Premier has pledged disaster relief funding will be made available to the region. That'll include grants to Council for the restoration of essential services and low interest loans of up to $80,000 each for small businesses. We will pay for the new flooring and the bedding and any equipment that's mm. been destroyed. Mr Carr also promised the residents assessors will visit their homes to determine what assistance they require. Ravenna Carroll, Prime Local News. Every available emergency service officer has been involved in the flood response. With resources stretched to breaking limit, many rescuers performed above and beyond the call of duty. Um, I could only classify the night probably as a... Um one of the most horrendous that we've had uh, for many, many years. Police, ambulance, fire brigade, SES, all exhausted today after last night's massive effort. Armed um, with little more than a torch and a raincoat, dozens of officers battled driving rain, freezing temperatures, traffic jams and rising flood water. We had a number of police injured um, uh, in relation to motor vehicle collision. Um, we had some uh, police also involved in rescues were slightly injured, but then again, uh, many emergency services the same. For the dozens of SES teams activated during the emergency, their movements were controlled from the operations room at state headquarters in Wollongong. Emergency numbers have now been set up for residents requiring further assistance. The state emergency service can be contacted on 422-6244. Chris Rickey, Prime Local News. Welfare organisations have also been flat out helping residents who were forced from their homes during the night. Some lost almost everything they owned. This scene at the Coromel Bowling Club highlights the community spirit that has shone through the bleakness of this disaster. Salvation Army officers hand out food while Red Cross volunteers counsel people whose homes were ravaged by floodwaters. We're actively involved uh, all over the Illawarra uh, trying to make sure there's enough food around for people to be able to be um, fed. This woman lost 95% of her belongings. Yeah, they've been great assistants. Yeah, they helped us with food and accommodation and with formula and things like that for the kids and that. But, uh, yes. yeah, the only thing I can say to them is just thank you. The Department of Community Services is also providing assistance. The recovery centre number is 422-68410. Meanwhile, Wollongong City Mission has established a national donation hotline to help those affected. That number, 1-800-640-250. We have staff on, on hand down here to, uh, to take cash, food or, uh, or clothing donations as well. The Lord Mayor has also launched a relief fund. Donations can be made through the IMB and Commonwealth Bank. Ravenna Carroll, Prime Local News. As heroic stories begin to surface from last night's disaster, an ugly side to Wollongong has shown its face. Police are now investigating reports of looting. The Cabbage Tree Hotel not only suffered massive damage and the loss of thousands of dollars worth of stock, but the owners also fell victim to looters. As staff were battling rising floodwaters, thieves helped themselves to wine and beer. Police have already recovered a bin full of alcohol left abandoned near the hotel. But we're very lucky because I had my husband and my son here. There's so many people so worse off than us, and people are doing it to their house too. Yeah, it's very sad. But it is, it's annoying to think people can take advantage of you. Both the police and the community are disgusted with the crime. Uh, the police reaction to looting, you know, is, um, I suppose, is considered the lowest of the low. Chris Rickey, Prime Local News. 
Welcome back. Well, the big wet has left Wollongong looking much like a war zone. Many residents put in a big effort today trying to restore things to normal. Jody Duffy has that story. It's been the biggest mop-up the region's seen for some time. At the break of day, the damage was obvious. At Ferry Meadow, there were cars everywhere, lifted from the ground in driveways, at least two in the creek, and at Fig Tree, one vehicle ended up in a tree. At the Fraternity Club, 14 staff cars were piled high, frightened patrons reliving the terrifying ordeal. The creek swirled over and then just the torrents run through the place and just made a hell of a mess. It was scary. We were so scared you seen all these cars just floating past because we went out and checked our car to make sure our car was all right. And all these cars were floating down past us, vending machines and everything. Club managers assess the damage done. Yeah, like we usually got two shipping containers here full of all the club records and they've just finished up down here um, towards East Beach somewhere. Incredible, absolutely incredible. They're about 25 tonnes each, and one's just here, and the other one's the other side of the northern distributor, about 200 metres away. In unbelievable. Inside, the club's been gutted. There's millions of dollars damage, both patrons and management devastated. One of our poker machine patrons came through this door to go to the toilet and thought he was in a fish bowl. The water was halfway up the, um, the windows out to the bowling area. The Prince's Highway got a hammering. One man thought he'd hit the jackpot, discovering a bottle of wine underneath the rubble, while nearby crews tried to prevent an oil spill seeping into stormwater drains. To the north, and shop owners began the massive task of cleaning up the mess. At Rutty's Real Estate, furniture had to be removed, while residents inspected the debris left at Hewlett's Creek. At Fig Tree's Westfield Shopping Centre, the big clean-up's also underway. It too has suffered massive flood damage. The centre won't be open until Thursday. Jody Duffy, Prime Local News.